Guess who's serving Noxie in realness? <laughs> You're doing well. Did the comic make me buy a wig and lenses to see whether or not I can pull off a Katarina look? Yeah. Will I also use this opportunity to drag the Mossians on TikTok? Absolutely. So you, uh, you played in a movie called The Hunger Games. Um, yeah, isn't that your life story? <laughs> you shouldn't say that. That's off-putting. You should it? be off-putting. Because you're fat. You shouldn't eat any more pudding. Yeah, yeah. So Ride Forge released chapter 5 and 6 of their Mage Seeker prologue comic, Katarina. And I'm here again to break it down for you. If you haven't read chapters 1 through 4, I've already made a breakdown of it last week, so I'll leave a link for you to go check it out if you haven't already. Last week, after my first Katarina breakdown, I went on stream for a lore discussion where we learn about additional information. Scott, the writer of the comic, was also kind enough to clarify it for us. Starting with... A Varosa statue in chapter 1, where Katarina killed General Raish. Apparently, this happened in a Ferlurian town, that bordered Noxus. Next was the sick detail of the Noxian shadow crest that was cast between the siblings. Rebecca, the comic artist, added it to symbolize Katarina's and Talon's relationship. Noxus's crest, for those who don't know, was inspired by the Traferix's Doctrine, where the eyes represent vision, the pillars represent might, and the blades represent guile, which were technically inspired by Mordekaiser's principles of destiny, domination, and deceit. Scott also verified that my assumption regarding the 5D chess between LeBlanc and Swain is a nudge in the right direction. We still, however, don't know what their deal is. All we know is that they're somehow involved in whatever's going on, including the Black Rose. And speaking of the Black Rose, our girl Dran might actually have something to do with them. During the discussion, I realized something weird within the tea house, and that's the flowers. See, one of the reasons why Noxus expands into other territories is because the land in Noxus is too dried and devoid of resources, which can't really grow anything, let alone flowers. The only place you'll find flowers in Noxus will be Vladimir's estate, and that's because he grows them with blood and the tears of orphans. Yeah, he kind of gets off on children being in emotional pain and watches them cry about it then collects their tears in his little vial of tears, which he then uses to either paint with and or fertilize his plants. Yeah. Anyway, one of the flowers that he grows in his garden is called the Night Bloom, a flower you could only find in Maokai's Grove in the Blessed Isles, in which in Legends of Runeterra, the Lunari assassins spread on their blade. Unfortunately, I can't really go off of what's in Legends of Runeterra because the lore there is mostly what-if scenarios, so I can't be sure if it's poisonous. But a flower that is canonically poisonous is the Ionian Serpent Leaf, which is known for its healing properties and poison if picked incorrectly. With Vladimir being a member of the Black Rose, I won't be surprised that such dangerous plants will be in his hands. But the real question is, why similar looking flowers are growing in Dran's very Ionian looking tea house? Is she part of the Black Rose? Is she just a pawn? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. The next thing we've discussed was whether or not it was really Jarvan III who was killed, and not some stun double that LeBlanc produced. Scott again clarified that it was in fact Jarvan III, so Katarina did kill him. But the question is, who moved the body? At first I thought it was one of the guards, as they obviously wouldn't leave the king dead in a bunker. But in chapter 5 we watch Katarina slaying them all. That's when a familiar face comes to check on the king. Captain Geridon. The same guy who allowed Lux to enter the Mage Seeker headquarters and access all the confiscated writings and books that were hidden there. Technically, she wasn't allowed there, and if it was anyone else, they would have been denied. But Geridon not only allowed her to enter, he also brought her to the Arcane Registry, where he reassured her he would guard with his life while she looked around. This is where she learned about the retaining cells where mages were tortured in, and where she also met Silas. In the new chapter, we find out that Geridon was apparently in on all of what's going on right now, and he also believed Katarina wouldn't be able to kill the king and get away with it, which apparently complicated whatever plan he was a part of. Katarina was apparently supposed to die in the king's chambers, and if she would have been found there as Swain's personal assassin, that would have been a problem, which makes us believe that this might have actually been LeBlanc's plan. Katarina then points out that this is not the first time her father wants her dead, but then why go through all the extra steps if he could just kill her at Dran's? That and also, did he do all of this because Swain really became corrupted? Or is there something more to it? And again, is that really her father? 
Her train of thought gets cut off when Garen, who was beat up by Silas and laid in an eight-hour coma, shows up, punches her in the back, and accuses her of being the mage who helped Silas escape. In Chapter 6, we then learn that the one who told him about her was Captain Jeridon. Jeridon knows Katarina is not a mage, and he also knows that she was the one who killed the king. So why did he tell Garen that she was a mage that simply helped Silas escape? And most importantly, why didn't he tell him that the king is fucking dead? Katarina clears up the little misunderstanding and tells him that she is no mage and that he'll need to be more specific about who it is she was trying to save. Garen ignores her mind games and demands to know where is Silas, which she simply responds to with, Silas? Oh, Lex's favorite criminal, living Garen dumbfounded. The two then start fighting as Katarina admits that she knows Lux is a mage and confirms that Garen himself knows it too. He manages to lock a patricide cuff on her arm thinking it will stop her powers, but she just kicks him in the face and gets out of it. She tells him that whoever is Jeridon, he lied to him, that she doesn't know a Silas, and that she met Lux when she saved him from Captain Arica and her mage-hating guards when they found out Lux was a mage herself. Garen still won't listen and attacks her again, but she points out that if he won't yield and go save his sister, those guards are gonna finish their job. Right then, the castle blows up, announcing the beginning of the Mage War. The two split apart so Garen could go save Lux and Katarina could escape. But not before he gets completely pussy whipped by the one he doesn't know is the actual King Slayer. I can't wait to see Garen's expression when he finds out that it was Katarina who killed his king! <laughs> Garen's story then continues on to chapter 4 of the Lox comic, and Katarina waits for Nightfall to try and get out of Demacia by kidnapping a silver winged diver. She almost manages to escape, but Jeridon shoots the writer for Noxus and makes them both fall off the silver wing. The beast tries to catch her, but Katarina breaks her dagger against its talons and falls to the ground, leaving us to wonder who does Jeridon work for? Was it her father's order? A member of the Black Rose? One of Swain's war masons, maybe? Or perhaps someone who just really doesn't want the best Noxian assassin in their way. I'm still trying to figure out who it might be, but what we do know is that in this last two chapters, none of Swain's ravens were around. That Katarina wasn't supposed to kill the king, that Jeridan doesn't want anyone to know it was Katarina who killed the king, and even though he could have shot Katarina off the silver wing, he shot the rider instead, with a weapon that doesn't look Demacian nor Noxian. Now we just need to wait for next week to try and clarify all this drama. But that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment for the algorithm gods. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon or donate to our Ukrainian crowdfund page. Thanks again for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>